Hi, welcome to my channel where I share my knowledge on programming with Python and OpenCV. And today, we're going to learn how to perform better face detections using the Google Media Pipe face mesh model. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by looking at the mesh face detector.py module, which is a part of our face detection package. Now, this module provides a face mesh detector class that allows us to perform face detection using OpenCV and Google Media Pipe libraries. Starting with our imports, we will be using OpenCV, Media Pipe, and NumPy. So we import these as such. Following our imports, we define our face mesh detector class, which is designed to detect facial landmarks using the power of Media Pipe's face mesh model. For this class, we first define some styling contents that we will use for drawing on our video frames. These include the font style, the font's text color, the bounding box color, and the box slash text line thickness. By defining these in such a way, we can easily change how we want our drawn detection boxes and text to appear on our video stream. On to our class constructor we see that we have some arguments, which include static mode, max faces, refined landmarks, min detection confidence, and min tracking confidence. Now, you can look in this block comment here as to a basic description of each, but let's go ahead and go in as we set these and explain each. So here we have self.results equals none. This initializes the results attribute to none. It will be what holds the results of our face detection and landmarks using our mesh detector. Next, we have self.imageRGB equals none. This initializes the image RGB attribute to none. It will store the RGB version of the input image, considering that we have to read our image in first with OpenCV, which is in the BGR format. Following this, we have the other arguments all set to themselves, essentially. Well, let's go through each. We have self.static mode is equal to static mode. This assigns the value of static mode to the self.static mode attribute. Static mode is what determines whether face landmarks are refined for every frame. Now then we have max faces. Without going into much here, this defines the maximum number of faces we're allowed to detect. And before we continue, we see we set static mode to false, and we also are gonna set our maximum faces to be detected to 10. This was done when I was testing over a video containing a larger number of people, and I wanted to make enough detections to capture every face. Now, back past our max faces, we have self.refined landmarks equals refined landmarks. Now, this is uh, what determines that the face landmarks are refined. It's similar to our static mode. We will set this to true because we do want them to be refined if we so chose to draw the landmarks and their connections in our processing method. Now, following this, we have minimum detection confidence. This is the minimum confidence value for a face detection to be considered valid. Following our minimum detection confidence, we have our minimum tracking confidence, which we set as a part of this class equal to what is passed in the initialization. Now, this minimum tracking confidence is the value for a face to be considered successfully tracked, similar to our minimum detection confidence, but this allows for tracking throughout the video frames. Now, following these, we're going to initialize some drawing utilities and our face mesh model. We see here self.mp draw. Now, this is the mp.solutions.drawing utils and initializes our mp draw attribute to be the drawing utilities from the Media Pipe Solutions Library. It provides tools to draw on images. We're not going to be using this because we have our own method to draw a rectangle instead of drawing our landmarks and their connections. But if you chose to do this in such a way, you would implement your drawing utilities in the processing video method you'll see next. But before we look to this, let's continue with our constructor. Following our MP draw, we have MP face mesh equals MP solutions dot face mesh. Now, this initializes the MP face mesh attribute to the face mesh model from the MediaPipe Solutions library. 
This is the module that is actually responsible for our detections and the landmarks that we find in them. And now following this, we're finally ready to initialize an instance of our face mesh object. We do this by typing self.facemesh equals self.mp face mesh dot face mesh. And we pass in all of our initialized values as arguments. Now one last thing in our constructor, we have self.draw spec equals self.mp draw dot drawing specs with a thickness equal to one and a circular circle radius equal to two. This creates a specification for drawing if we so if we chose to do so in our processing video method. Now again, we're going to be using a different uh, drawing method which draws rectangles such that we can switch between our hard detector and mesh detector to simply detect over a frame that is passed into a method as an argument. Now one final note is that by setting this up in such a way, we provide the ability to customize these parameters very easily. And this is one of the strengths of using a class-based approach to our programming. It allows for flexibility and adaptability in different scenarios. On to our detect faces method. We take in a frame as a numpy.nd array in this method, and we process it for our face detections. Now to do this, we first convert our image to the RGB format. Now, in our entry point module, in which we are receiving our video feed from our computer's internal webcam, we are going to be receiving them using OpenCV, which processes images in the BGR format. So knowing this, when we take our frame in, we're going to convert it to RGB first. Past this, we're going to go ahead and call self.results equals self.facemesh.process, and we're going to pass our RGB image. Now this, this process is the frame using our face mesh model to detect faces and the landmarks on them. Then these results are stored in our self.results variable. Now past this, we're going to go ahead and use an if statement to check if there are any face landmarks in the results. Now past our check for face landmarks. If they are found, we want to loop through them such that we can receive the coordinates of them and draw our bounding box on our frame. Now, so we're going to go ahead and do this using the line for face LMs, face landmarks, in our self dot results right here, dot multi face landmarks. And then with each landmark detected, we're going to pass it into a method that we define next called draw bounding box. This is where if you if you so choose to rather draw the key points and landmarks and their connections instead using the MP drawing utilities, you would do it here. But we're not going to because we want this to be able to translate between the same program, whether the user decides to use the hard detector or the mesh detector. And to do this, we have to ensure that both methods for detecting faces only take in a frame and have no other reliances on the libraries that make the detections. With that being said, so we go ahead and draw our bounding boxes after looping through all the face landmarks. And then we want to go ahead and define a variable as our face count, which is in the string format because we're going to print it as text to the screen. And we get the number of faces by taking the length of our self.results.faulty face landmarks, which is the number of faces actually detected. And then we'll put this text on the screen using our cv2.putText method. And we'll also print this to the console just using a simple print statement. Now that we know how we're making detections, we need to understand how we're going to actually draw our bounding boxes over these detections. We do this using our draw bounding box method, which takes in our numpy.nd array frame and our face landmarks, which are of a named tuple type. Now, using our frame, we're going to first get its shape. We have this as IH, IW, and IC for our images height, width, and channels. We're not going to be using the channels, but it's specified here to unpack it from our frames.shape. Using these, we next going to define X min, X max, Y min, and Y max. And we're going to set our minimum X and Y values to our images width and height, and our maximums to zero. Now, we are going to do this because we're next going to go through the frame or should I say, we're next going to go through our landmarks detected, and we're going to get the coordinates of each. 
So these coordinates we're going to use in unison with our frame's shape by checking each coordinate's x, y position and comparing it to our current x min, x max, y min, and y max. So let's go ahead and let's put this into perspective by going through our first landmark. Say we loop through a landmark and we find its x, y coordinate is directly in the center of our image. Now, if this is the case, then that means our x value is in fact less than our x min, because if you remember right, we're gonna set that to our image's width. So half of our width is definitely less. Now we're gonna do this for our max too, because half of our frame is greater than none of our frame, which is what we initially set our maximum width as. And this can be said in the same way for our y's. We get the y value of our landmark, and of course, it's gonna be less than our image's height because that is our maximum value in our range. And similarly, our y value is gonna be greater than zero, which is our initial y maximum declaration. I hope this helped, but um, I think it'd be better now than to go through after our initial comparison with our initial values. So say now that we identify our next landmark, which is two thirds uh, to the right of the screen and we'll just keep Y in the center so we can ignore that. So we're gonna just focus on our X's because if you remember, we were first analyzing the situation in which our X and Y values for the first landmark were directly in the center. So if both of our Y values for these two landmarks are the same, we can ignore it. Nothing will happen with those. But if the X value for our one, which is two thirds to the right of the screen, is less than our x which is half which is not then it would change but it's not going to change because our x minimum is already going to be set for the point of the landmark which is closer to the center as two-thirds of the way to the right is a greater x value now for our x max we're going to change this because our maximum x value has changed now from the center point of the frame to two-thirds along the X range of the frame. And that's the way that I can put these words, or I can put my thoughts into words on this. I know it might be confusing for some, but if you can work through that understanding a couple times, I like to think that you'll get the same grasp on it that I have. So understanding our loop, we're gonna go down and we're gonna draw our bounding box using most minimum and most maximum X and Y coordinates. Since we loop through all of our landmarks, we're gonna know which ones contain our X min and Y min and our X max and Y max. And with these set, we draw a rectangle to start at our minimum points and end at our maximum points. And we use the color and thickness defined in our class constants. And that's it. Now again, I'm sorry if this is a little bit confusing on our draw bot are on our draw bounding box method, but I encourage you to mentally picture the scenario I was walking through a couple different times until maybe that you can get a better grasp as I have. We're in our entry point module here, and we just have to make a few additions to import our mesh face detector and then initialize it and run our face detection. So our first we have to import from our face detection package. And from the mesh face detector module, we're gonna import our mesh, our face mesh detector. As you can see in our project structure here, that's what we use as a reference to import it. Now, we don't have to do any changes to our detect over webcam as per our design. Our design intends that we can set up our methods so that they can run in this video processing function such that the detection method only takes in the current frame as its argument. So we're not changing that. We just have to add our mesh detector now. So we'll initialize this as mesh detector. We're gonna set equal to our base mesh detector. And now with that initialized, we're gonna go to our detect over webcam function 
which we call on main, and we're going to change the detector in which we're running this with to our mesh detector. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and hit run and see the results here. It'll take a minute now while our base mesh loads, but in a second here, we will be seeing our output window displayed. There we have it. There's our window and we're being detected. Now, if I turn, we're holding pretty good detections. If I turn, let's see, I'll do a complete 360. Just keep it forward, I'm getting dizzy. Okay, so I think that was pretty good. Let's try two faces. Okay, Tesla's not a right away, but a little bit of change in our orientation. We're picking it up. Let's try another turn. Tesla's not picked up right away. Okay. Okay. So this is good. We're getting really good detections and I'd say they're far better than our frontal face detector. Now our frontal face detector use a lot less features to make face detections. And that's why this is far better. A lot more key points, a lot more landmarks, results and better detections. Now we could change our minimum detection or tracking confidence, and we might get better results maybe with detecting Tesla, as you can see, but really these are good detections. And now you've done it. You've learned how to detect faces over your webcam in a more advanced and accurate way by using the Google Media Pipes face mesh model. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that. I appreciate your support. And until next time, have a great day.